I feel like the whole internet's gonna hate me after this video. I want to try to do a peace deal between comic book fans, you know, your traditional comic book fans, and diversity advocates, and these may be liberals, or social justice warriors, or feminists, or whatever you want to call them. People who are pushing for diversity in comics as well as other um, geek related media. If you've been paying attention to Marvel Comics at all, Marvel has been sort of replacing a lot of their main Marvel superheroes with more diverse counterparts. So we have um, Jane Foster as Thor, we have Miles Morales Spider-Man, we have Sam Wilson Captain America, Amadeus Cho as the Hulk, Kamala Khan Miss Marvel, and most recently Riri Williams as Iron Man. So this has sparked a huge kind of debate within the comic book community because there's a lot of people who don't like these changes. They feel like Marvel's changing way too many of their superheroes and comics aren't what they used to be and they're pandering to the liberal social justice agenda. And you have this other side that thinks that Marvel's been way too white, you know, the majority of their heroes are buff white guys and skinny white women with big boobs and they want to see a change within the comic book industry and they want it to be more diverse. I'm going to give my opinion on what I think Marvel should do and what I think people on both sides should kind of look out for and what they think they should do. Before that, just to give you a quick uh, rundown about like me. I consider myself a black nerd. I take pride in being a black nerd because sometimes like my black interests and my nerd interests can be a little different. Sometimes they can conflict. And I'm here to kind of give my opinion on this because I think since I kind of see things from multiple perspectives, I can kind of give a nuanced answer to this debate. As the world becomes more unified and more integrated, I believe that media should reflect that. So you look at superhero teams, you know, a lot of these teams came out in the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, etc., where pretty much everybody was white. It's really important to bring in new characters with different perspectives so that they can more accurately represent society as well as the people who actually purchase in comic books. So there are plenty of women and minorities who enjoy comic books. These people care about the medium just as much as your average kind of main, you know, Caucasian fans. However, what Marvel's kind of been doing with their comics is that they've essentially been pushing all their classic characters to the side just to bring in all of these new characters. And there is a problem with this, is because the way comics works, characters like Captain America and Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk and Thor and Spider-Man have been around for so long that they're always going to be associated with their normal white you know, counterparts. So Peter Parker, Steve Rogers, Bruce Banner, you know, Thor Odinson, you know, these characters, they're always going to be the main superheroes. And I don't think you'll ever really be able to change that. And I can understand, like, as a longtime fan, why you might be upset when, you know, these characters, say you've been following Tony Stark for years, and now Tony Stark's gone and some new person's there. I can understand why that might upset you as a fan, because you're like, wait, I've been spending the last, you know, 20 years following this person's story and now they're just, you know, in a coma or gone and I'm supposed to follow this new person, like what? You know, it's like, it's like if you had a favorite restaurant you went to and then one day you walked in and all your favorite dishes on the menu were changed, you know, you, you'd be upset, right? So I think what Marvel needs to do is that when pushing for diversity, they need to take a little bit more care into how new characters are introduced and take care to what they do with the old characters. So I'll use Riri Williams for an example. Riri Williams is a black female Iron Man and the way she's introduced into the comics is really rushed, really sloppy, pretty much Tony Stark ends up falling into a coma and now this new, you know, random super genius black girl just is somehow, you know, the person in the world that can take over his mantle and now she's new Iron Man. My problem isn't that there's a black female that's Iron Man, it's the fact that there's no build up to it. Okay, we don't, people don't know Riri Williams from Adam and so they don't care enough to buy her book or follow her story. You know, I, it would have been a better way to introduce her 
had you, maybe she was a Tony Stark sidekick, or maybe she was a character that appeared in the Iron Man comics. Maybe she helped him out with a problem. Maybe he decided to train her, teach her how to be a superhero. And then maybe at some point, Tony Stark can't find any more and she has to take over the mantle. You know, you could have had Rear Williams as a sidekick or a character, you know, that existed within, you know, the main Iron Man stories for a certain length of time. And then when she finally transitioned into taking Iron Man's mantle, it would have felt earned. When you just push new characters on the readers, there's going to be a lot of backlash. So what I'm asking for Marvel is just to make sure when you're introducing new characters, give readers a certain amount of time to get to know them. And don't necessarily just get rid of the old character, you know, extremely quickly. I think it's what they did with um, Cap uh, Black Captain America. Sam Wilson was really good because Sam Wilson was Captain America's sidekick, he was the Falcon. So when Steve Rogers pretty much couldn't fight anymore, having Sam Wilson take over for him from a story perspective made sense because if someone's gonna replace the mantle of the main hero, the sidekick's been the guy who's been around and been fighting with them for a long time. So yeah, it makes sense that Sam Wilson would want to take over the mantle. Another good example would be over in DC, there's a new Green Lanterns comic with two new Green Lanterns, Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. And these two characters, they had been around, you know, in DC Comics for a little while. And now they're pretty much the new Green Lanterns of Earth and you care about them and it feels earned because not only have they been around for a while, but the other Green Lanterns, you know, the White Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and all the rest of those guys, they're still around. Hal Jordan's got his own book where he's off in space doing space stuff, and now you have these new, you know, the new more diverse Green Lanterns as the Green Lanterns of Earth. So it essentially keeps everybody happy. Everybody wants to compare DC and Marvel, but in the comics right now, DC's doing a lot better job because they're incorporating new things into their stories, but still keeping what the original fans liked. So, originally DC, for instance, got in trouble because they replaced Wally West with a brand new Wally West who was black. People didn't like him, they felt like he wasn't the Wally West that they knew. Well, they decided, okay, we're gonna bring back the original Wally West and have him do his own thing, but they're also gonna have the new black Wally West in the stories as well. So, you've got new characters, more diverse characters to bring in new readers or for people who don't feel like they're represented, but you haven't just axed and just got, gotten rid of the characters that people have enjoyed for years. Now I'm gonna get into um, what people on both sides of the debate should do because neither, you, neither of these sides are perfect and you have both done some terrible things. So let's begin. First of all, nerds and geeks. And when I say nerds and geeks, I mean the people who are complaining about how comics are going downhill all the time now. Most of you guys, are, I'm gonna be honest, most of you guys are probably white, but maybe not everyone. So look, nerds, stop being pricks, okay? Calling everyone a social justice warrior or a feminazi or regressive, you know, calling all these names, you know, harassing people online, you know, just general just being a prick because you don't like the direction of your story going. It's just not cool. If you're honestly just not interested in the way story, your stories are going, yeah, you feel free, feel free to complain, you know? Don't buy the comic, but stop harassing people. Stop going after minorities and women and calling them, you know, terrible names and trying to ruin their life just because you don't like the change in a comic, okay? It's silly, it's immature, and it's just childish. And the people that complain that comics have gotten too political and you don't want politics in your comics, look, politics have always been a part of comics from the very beginning. I mean, Superman and Captain America were fighting Nazis for Pete's sakes. That was completely political. Art to an extent is going to reflect society and things that go on within society. And to the people that want no change whatsoever, you know, the people that are like, dude, I just want my jacked white guy heroes and my skinny, busty women and that's all I care about. I don't care about any new stories or anything like that. Look, times are changing and stories are going to change with that. And to an extent, I don't think, you know, classic 
combo trope will ever go away completely. So look, if you look hard enough, you're still gonna be able to find your classic, you know, vanilla mainstream superhero stuff. There's, you know, there's never gonna be a shortage of buff guys being superheroes and sexy women in comics. I don't think that's ever gonna go away completely. I just think it's part of the culture. And look, I'm not saying that all you guys are racist or bad people, but let's keep it real. Some of you probably are. You know, comic book readers are like anyone else, where obviously not every comic book reader is racist, but out of any segment of any group, there's gonna be a segment that's racist. And, you know, you're gonna get people like this. You know, I, I, I don't think I'm gonna see Black Panther. I just I just don't think I can relate to it. Really, why? I mean, you, you saw Thor. I mean, Thor takes place in another dimension. Well, you know, I just I just don't like the setting. I mean, it's 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 you know it's in it's in Africa. You know, there are like there are like a lot of black people there. My second bit of criticism: we're gonna go to the diversity advocates. So look, just because someone doesn't like a change in a comic or character doesn't mean that they're racist. All right? Don't get me wrong. Some of them are, as I've just stated, but. There are a lot of people who genuinely, you know, maybe they're big Tony Stark fans. They've been following Tony Stark for years, and now the comic is different, and they don't like that, and that's causing them to not want to be in the new stories. You know, these people have valid opinions, and they deserve to just be acknowledged, all right? So just because someone just says, hey, dude, I'm just not, I'm not really into female Thor, sorry, doesn't mean that they're automatically sexist. Because just because a comic has diverse characters or diverse writers doesn't mean the comic is good. You know, a good comic at the end of the day is a good comic. And if a story is good, it'll transcend race and gender and all of that stuff. The reason I want to make this distinction is because when you don't make a distinction between like actual racists, you know, the hardline, anti-SJW people, and people who maybe just don't like the direction of a store and you conflate the two, you push people away from your perspective. There's a lot of people who are honestly in the middle, and when you act too militant, you can push these people away into the arms of all the anti-SJW people. When you write articles that I've seen them, we've all seen them, like comic book fans are racist, racist comic book fans. When you conflate people that may be legitimately not happy about certain changes with you know people who are just racist pricks that can turn people away from your message of diversity and inclusion and people who would have otherwise maybe picked up that Riri Williams comic now they've turned off because they feel insulted and rejected by a medium that they choose to put their money into and that they choose to enjoy also Marvel again you don't have to push all these super radical changes on readers all at once. You can do it a lot more slowly. And when I say that, I'm not saying, well, you can only have two main black superheroes and no one else, society's not ready for that. All I'm saying is that introduce characters into the stories carefully so that fans can get to know them and get to like them. That way, there won't be this huge backlash from all these changes because people don't feel like they're being bombarded with all of this stuff all at once. Again, I think DC is a good example of what they've done with Simon Baz, Jessica Cruz, as well as Black Wally West, as well as um, having Cyborg in the Justice League. My final takeaway is, look, diversity is a wonderful thing and should be a part of geek media and entertainment. But while pursuing diversity, you want to make sure you're not spitting in the face of your longtime readers and fans because that hurts sales and then these comics don't make it and the whole geek community suffers. The problem is when you conflate, you know, people who may be middle of the road with people who are just super anti-diversity in comics, period, you can end up turning people who are in the middle of the road away from you. There may be people who, you know, they may be interested in reading a Riri Williams comic, but they see all these articles about white comic book readers being racist, now they're like, man, screw it, you know, I'm just not gonna read any of this crap at all. Make sure that instead of just yelling at people and calling them names, that you're explaining to people why certain characters are great and why you want to embrace these new stories and you want to pull them into your fandom. You want people to feel like they can be a part of your Kamala Khan fandom with you. You don't want to feel like, hey, this is my black stuff, this is for me, you can't be a part of it. So I recorded the rest of this earlier and I totally forgot to do an outro. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like the video and also leave a comment down below about what you think about 
fandoms and diversity and comics and how you think this problem can be solved effectively. Or you could just leave a mean comment and hate me. Either way, I will catch you all later. Peace.